Let's play What Girls Do in the Dark. The tile in this version of the kitchen is the same as the path you just took. Slimy and all too eager to make sickening noises. But is it drag queen sickening or is it sickening? Hi there! Uh, it's Hula Noob playing short indie horror games and today I opted for What Girls Do in the Dark. So, this is part of the HQ Residential House Game Jam that was initiated by John Wolf, who is super famous for playing a lot of indie horror games and whenever the HQ Residential House popped up, which is basically a game environment developers can buy and a lot of them do that and then they don't change anything about it. <laughs> And so you, it's easily recognizable. And John Wolf is kind of famous for always being like walking into like a game and then be like, wait, is that HQ, HQ residential house? And um, he had the, I think, good humor, but also genius idea to say, well, let's do a game jam where people have to use the HQ residential house. Jeez, it's a tongue twister. Um, but try to do it in a different way. And then he also posted a video playing some of the games. And in the comments, a lot of people said, Oh, I hope you also play what girls do in the dark because it's really seriously creepy. So I'm not John Wolf. Sorry about that. But I'm intrigued. And this, like the, the game itself sounds intriguing. Um, it's basically this little game is based off one of the greatest fears I had as a teenage girl. Showing up late to a stranger's slumber party. I don't think I've ever went to a stranger's slumber party, but I've went to slumber parties and they're always amazing and terrifying at once because you're in a stranger's family's home. Um, if you like like um, sleepover slumber party horror games, <laughs> I also heavily recommend um, sleepover rules. But for now, we're playing uh, What Girls Do in the Dark, which sounds so well, it sounds interesting. Okay. Okay. I hope this works. Apparently, um, I'm, I'm recording games with uh, Microsoft, with the recording software. And apparently, the full screen version of this game does not like the Microsoft recording software. Anyways, you're late. You're in the passenger seat of your family's car, driving to Brandy Harrison's slumber party, and you're late. And not by 10 or 15 minutes, but by a full hour. Honestly, I don't think that would have been any issue with my friends back there. I mean, at a certain age, when you're very young, yes, because small kids need routines. But as a teenager, pff, who, who cares? Anyways, it wouldn't be so much of a problem if you knew Brandy Harrison, but you don't. Oh, your best friend Stephanie does because they ended up sitting next to each other in English class a couple of weeks ago. And now they're inseparable or whatever. Oh, someone's jelly. Stephanie says Brandy invited you to her party because she wanted to meet you. But you suspect Brandy felt she had to because you're Stephanie's plus one. Whatever the case, you're still sitting in the car as your dad drives through the twisting roads of suburbia. Type help at any time for the game's tutorial. Okay. This game does not require use of the word okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just... Hmm. So, oh, I have to do this? Okay. Tutorial. Welcome to What Girls Do in the Dark. This is a text adventure game, which means you'll be typing commands to progress the story. This is, by the way, the first text-based game I played since school. So, that will be... This, this, I think this will be... A little bit of a slog for me. The game recognizes verb noun commands such as look, fireplace, take flashlight and use scissors. Along with the co cardinal directions north, south, east, west, up and down to move between areas. Oh my god, I will forget all of this. But I can. With help, I can always, yeah. To examine your surroundings, type look. Important interactable objects in an area are written in capital letters. But feel free to look at anything else for more information and immersion. If you ever want to save your progress, type save. Type load to start from one of your recent saves. Press enter to return to the game. Look. Car. The same car your family's had for years. It's hard to admire its inter 
tricacies when you're still anxious about making it to Brandy's. Look. Dad! Medium height, medium build, medium capacity for dad jokes. You've caught his concerned glances for the past few seconds. East. You can't go that way. Oh, I have to. Okay. But look east. What's... Oh, no. You see nothing special. Oh, thank you for graciously reading my typos. Look. North. You see nothing special. Okay. Hmm. Talk, Dad. <gasps> Is something wrong, you say, when he glances over for the third time in the past 12 seconds? He sighs. Sorry, Teresa, about being late, I mean. There was a problem at work and I lost track of time and I don't... I'm sorry. You know what he really wants to say? That your mom was always the one who was on time and ready for anything. That he's not used to having double duty now that she's gone. He's such a trope, you know, the single parent in any horror scenario. He's trying, you know he is, but you've been talking about how nervous you are for this for the past week. And being an hour late to meet Stephanie and two other random girls with a gift you guessed would be appropriate doesn't help. You have to bring gifts to slumber parties? That's new to me. Unless it's birthday? Mm -mm. Still, your dad could probably use a bit of comfort. Gift? Comfort? Okay. Oh, comfort. Uh, uh, dad. It's okay, dad. I know. I love you, you say with your most reassuring smile. His shoulders relax and he smiles at you before he turns back to the road. Love you too, sweetheart. Blap. You finally get to Brandy Harrison's house. It looks exactly the same as every other house in the neighborhood. There's a single light coming from one of the upstairs bedrooms. Looks a little dark, Dad says. Stephanie said everyone was going to be playing a game in the dark when the party started, you say. They're probably in the middle of it right now. You're weirdos. You watch horror movies. He pauses, then nods. Well, okay. I put your gift for Brandy in the glove box. Make sure you take it before you get out. Uh, open a glove box. Inside, you see a manual, some tissues, and a wrapped gift. Take gift. Sorry, I hope I don't scream into your ears. When you pick up your gift for Brandy, you hear the beads from the jewelry kit inside rattling around. You hope Brandy's the kind of girl who likes friendship bracelets because that's really all the gift has going for it right now. You close the glove box. Thanks for wrapping my gift for me, Dad, you say. Anytime, kiddo, he says. Go have fun. Guess it's time to face the music. You get out of the car and smile at your dad, which he returns. You then walk up to the front of the house. You ring the doorbell. It echoes through the house, but you hear no responses. You knock a couple of times, pausing to listen again. This time you hear a noise that sounds vaguely enough like a come in for you to feel comfortable going inside and taking off your shoes. Giving one last wave to your dad from the doorway, you shut the door. Like that? Is that how, how people do that? Okay. Normal people? Human people? Wow, Stephanie wasn't kidding when she said it'd be dark. You feel around the wall for a light switch. When you flip it, however, nothing happens. Did the girl shut off the power to the whole house for the sake game? That's dedicated and slightly concerning. You can see a faint light coming from up the stairs. Look east. You see now, okay. Ah, what? Um, then go up. Upstairs landing. You're at the top of the stairs. You see a faint light coming from the west. The stairs lead down. Go down. Entryway. The Harrison's entryway. Sure is dark in this house. Okay. You can see a faint light coming from somewhere up the stairs. Okay. So go up again. Go west. Upstairs hallway. Nothing terribly exciting happening here. Everything is dark except for a faint light coming from the room west of you. The upstairs landing is back east. Go west. Okay. You see a flashlight on a desk that's on the far side of the room. This must have been the light you saw from outside. The upstairs hallway is east. I'm sorry for always like... I don't want to go like flashlight, but it's it's caps lock. You gotta... It's, it's you know... I, I have to. 
So get flashlight. You take the flashlight. Brandy's bedroom. This must be Brandy's bedroom, judging by the dozens of pictures and the headline Brandy's bedroom of her and her friends on the wall. You see a long desk with a large terrarium on top next to Brandy's bed. The upstairs hallway is east. Look at terrarium. It looks like it hasn't been used in a while. There's a tiny plaque on the top of the terrarium that reads Junebug. Aww. Look at desk. On top of the desk you see a ripped piece of paper and a pencil. Take pencil. You take the pencil. Stealing! On a slumber party. That's my jam. Okay. Not that I... I would have thought. I had issues as a kid. I own up to that. I don't feel proud of that though. Um, read paper. A standard game of MASH. Looks like... Oh, what is MASH? I only know the show. I'm not from America, so I don't know. Looks like Stephanie works as a veterinarian veterinarian in an apartment in Spain with six oh yeah that's the one I think where you you build something like a little like it has a mouth and you can put it out f in different directions and then you write stuff on it like different like different celebrities and then houses and countries and jobs and then you be like I don't know you give your age or whatever or the day you're born and then you're like blah 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 and then what opens is your future I, I, I post a link to the game if you want to play it because slumber parties without games are not fun so you know so you have something for your next slumber party anyway so it looks like Stephanie works as a veterinarian in an apartment in Spain with six kids and a truck in the future oh yeah it was always the number of kids and none of the numbers was zero so yeah not for everyone Oh, and she sa ended up with Diego Ortega from Biology. Lucky, you flip the paper over. On the back of the paper, you see instructions that look like they were printed off the internet. Because the paper's ripped on both the top and bottom. It reads, The ritual area and its limits are defined by this, making it impossible for the area to be as big or as small as the participants desire. Though learning toward the former is recommended. Leaning, probably. Once the ritual has started, participants can enter the marked area, but none can leave until the ritual is complete. They are bound to the ritual area. Trying to leave will, at best, cause injury and at worst, <gasps> death is what I'm guessing. It's, it's not there. The instructions cut off there. You think you can guess the rest, though. See, Teresa and I are on board. Okay, um, drop paper. You don't have it. But where is it? Can I look around? You see nothing special. Okay. Go west. Go oh, east? Yeah. Upstairs hallway. Nothing terribly exciting happening here. Now that you have a light, you can see a smattering of family photos on the wall. Look! Photos! You take a moment to admire the photos on the wall. Pictures of Brandy and her parents at various tourist locations, restaurants and parties. Next to a picture of Brandy and her father at an award ceremony is a... St so she's rich? Is a standard shot of a younger Brandy with a giant snake wrapped around her arm. That's Junebug. She's grinning and giving a thumbs up to the camera. I would be happy too if I had a pet snake. Also, the name Junebug for a pet snake, that's just chef's kiss. Like, I like this. I really like this. Um, okay, Brandy's bedroom is to the west. So there, We've been there. Let's go to... Go south. Let's go to the ba bathroom. The bathroom houses the usual sink, toilet and tub. With a few personal care kits covering the calendar. It's okay. Typos... They're everywhere. They're in printed. They're in readily printed paper bags by Stephen King. So you can have typos as well. If Stephen King can have typos as a multi-millionaire, the most famous author ever, you can have typos in your in your indie games. 
Um, with a few personal care kits covering the counter, you recognize one of them as Stephanie's, which must mean the other two belong to Heather and Brandy. You see Stephanie's new portable curling iron next to her things. The upstairs hallway is north. Take the curling iron. Like, if if we're dealing with demons here, take everything. You take the portable curling iron. Although, does portable mean that it can be activated without, you know, a cable? Because otherwise, it's it's for nothing, and we just stole a bunch of stuff. Okay, go north. Um, and now we want to go the way back to the upstairs landing. Oh, well, then let's go. Um, where's the laundry room? Go north. A simple laundry room with a washer and dryer. On top of the dryer, you see a couple of shirts with the shopping tags still attached. S oh no, they bought. They probably shopped them. I was thinking stealing. I don't even know why. I mean, if you if you buy stuff, there's still the, the tag attached. A pair of children's safety scissors lies behind them. The upstairs hallway lies south. Let's get the scissors. Like, like <laughs> I'm just imagining being an actu at an actual slumber party, being late. And everyone is playing in a room or whatever. And you just appear out of nowhere. And you have like a curling iron. You have scissors. I forgot what the, the what the oh, you have a pencil like you have a bunch of shit just in your hands and I'm like well in case someone was possessed or anything. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm late and I stole all of this. Okay, take scissors. Of course, we're taking everything we can get. You take the pair of children's scissors. Apparently, we have a lot of space for for this stuff. So, all right, go south. Um, the way back to the upstairs landing is east. So I guess we can go downstairs now. You have the, most of the upstairs rooms are to the west. The stairs lead down. There's a closed door next to the stairs. Look, door. Just being around it gives you a disgusting feeling. Like food poisoning and secondhand embarrassment rolled into one. Ew. That, because secondhand embarrassment plays a lot in your stomach and food poisoning. That's a lot of stomach action. So we can't do anything with the door though. Right? Like it's closed. Open door. It's locked. Something tells you that's a good thing. Go down. Um... Ew, when you get to the bottom of the steps, you pause to get your bearings. You're stealing yourself to explore the rest of the house when you feel something drop on your hand. Something thick and wet. <gasps> it's blood! I feel another drop. It's coming from above you. You look up. It's Heather. She's draped over the chandelier above you. Her head lolled back, her eyes and mouth open. One of her arms hangs down toward you, and from down here you see that a few of her fingertips are dyed pink with something. Blood drips from her mouth, slipping down her cheek and dropping onto the entryway floor where you now see with your flashlight there's a small puddle of red beneath her body. Talk. Heather. Heather is dead. Oh, and as far as you know, you can't talk to ghosts. Why not? Live a little. Try things out, Teresa. You know, just do it. You never know what's hidden inside of you. Maybe you're a medium, after all. Look, Heather. It's not a pretty sight. A thin silver necklace with a heart pendant is around Heather's neck. Look, necklace. You can't get a good look from down here. Go up. Behind you, beyond the landing railing, Heather is draped over the entryway channel here. Look, Heather. You should be more disturbed seeing her like this, but everything about your current situation is so whack that all you can think is that being bent over a channel here can't be comfortable. A thin silver necklace with a heart pendant is around Heather's neck. Look, necklace. Looking closer, you see that the heart pendant on Heather's necklace is actually a small key. Oh! Yes, take necklace so we can get in through the room. You can reach it from here with your bare hands. Use curling iron. You can't do that. Use scissors. Use pencil. 
Look, scissors. No sharp point, but still cuts decently. Okay. Look, pencil. It has one of those soft pink erasers at the top, so that probably plays a role. Look, iron. Stephanie told you she was going to bring it tonight to curl your hair for you. It's one of those fancy ones that doesn't need to be plugged into heat. Okay. Look around. Go down. Okay, Heather is draped unceremoniously over the channel year be above you. It's not candle, no. It's the famous CR song, candle year. No. Oh my god, that was horrible. Sorry. With your flashlight, you can see a closet tucked into one of the walls. Sorry, I didn't want to shout that. So, um, open closet. Oh, there's also a family room. You open the broom closet to find a broom. Take broom. Take everything. You take the broom. That's how we can get the necklace. But also, I want to look at the go west. Finally, I can go west. It's a mess. The couch and end table are scooed away from the fireplace and notes cover the floor. A closed laptop sits on top of one of the couch's cushions. The dining room is north. The entryway is east. Luke, a fireplace. The embers inside glow slightly, as if its fire has recently burned out. You notice a scrap of paper buried underneath some ash. Let's get that scrap. Get, no. Take scrap. You take the half-burned scrap from the fireplace. Um, look scrap. The scrap is lined as if it was originally from a notebook. The words portal code are written on the scrap in neat handwriting. Take. Oh no, I already did take the scrap. Okay. Um, look notes. They're covered in nonsensical scribbles. Take notes. They won't do you any good since you can't make sense of them. <laughs> How do you know? Hmm? Hmm? I'm a smart girl. Um, open laptop. The laptop's lock screen is a selfie of Brandy and Stephanie during class. It requires you to type a password to open. Type a June bug. Yeah, you unlock the laptop. First try, first try. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, the internet is out, but the two tabs that were on the computer haven't been refreshed and display their information. One of them looks like a chat between Brandy and Heather from this morning. The other is a blog post from a website titled Rituals with Friends. You can close the laptop to return to the family room. Oh, I won't. Read chat. Oh my god, I will probably read something scathing about myself. Not about myself, about Teresa. And we're playing as Teresa. Heather Brandy. So, I got a little surprise for you tonight. What is it? Let's just say it's of the spooky variety. Heather, I swear to not bring a creepy occult stuff to my slumber party. You're not fun. Stephanie's friend's still coming. What's her name again? Tiffany? Teresa. Yeah, Stephanie says she's pretty shy, though, so we need to be extra nice to make sure she feels comfortable, okay? So Brandy is nice. That's good. I'm always nice. You know what I mean. I just don't want her to feel left out, you know? Yeah, yeah. Bleeding heart, Brandy, and all that. Aw, dude. Lol, 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 lol. Sorry, sorry. See you tonight? Yeah, yeah. Type close chat to return to the laptop. But that's nice. They didn't shit talk. They were nice. The internet is out. Oh, yeah. Um, read a blog. Protection charms when using spells. Thanks for the memories. October 29, 2007. That music, it's getting intense. If you're new to the spooky and occult and you find yourself nervous, don't worry. Protection charms are a staple of rituals and they're super easy to make. Lol. All you have to do is make the charm by hand, says some words, and you're done. If you really want to, you can even make a cute little protection charm bracelet. Oh my god. The rest of the article documents the process of making a protection charm, including making sure to put a part of yourself hair as recommended into the charm and confirming the charm with the ritual words, which are written <coughs> in a strange language beneath the instructions. Sorry. 
So you take a drink. That's a lot of reading. There's a comment at the bottom of the blog post that says it's been flagged for inappropriate content. Curious. You click on it. Blap. Average Jones. This article is total misinformation, just like this entire blog. I don't know what this author is thinking, but this is not safe. Sure, to end a portal ritual to another dimension, you'll need some kind of charm. But the words written above are an offering spell, not a protection one. Do not put any part of yourself into an offering charm when talking with a demon for your own safety. Really, don't do these spells at all. Oh my day, talk about a total buskill. What a troll, Waffle. I'm not trolling anyone, I'm just telling the truth. From what I can tell, this blog is full of lies meant to manipulate and trick people into offering their friends to demons <laughs> instead of whatever else you're promising them. Thanks for the memories, replies devolve into strings of insults, expletives and mem language you're not familiar with, making you think there's not much point to reading any further. Exit blog. So can we make ch a charm? Make charm. You unwrap your gift for Brandy and quickly fashion a protection charm. Now you just need one more thing to finish it. No. No. I thought we won't put something of us. What do you add to the charm? Nothing. This game does not require use of the word nothing. <laughs> Pencil. I don't wanna... But... It... It just said I should not use anything of my own. So I don't wanna... I don't... I don't wanna... <laughs> I don't wanna... No! Close laptop. I'm waiting a bit. I don't want to finish the... I Also, apparently... Oh... Hmm... Um, we looked at the fireplace, we looked at the notes. I want to look cushions. You see, nothing special. Aww. Look, a couch. Comfy. <laughs> dining room. Go north. One of the dining table chairs is tipped over and there's a dark stain on the carpet. On the table you see a spirit board broken in half with the planchet gone. People. No. Your dad always told you not to mess with this kind of stuff and you're always listen because you're not an idiot. Apparently no one else got the same talk. Just what kind of party was this supposed to be? Next to the spirit board you see a diary. To the south is the family room. The kitchen lies east of where you are. Look. Di I thought this would be a short game but this is getting... Wow. The name Heather is written in cursive at the top and the diary's keyhole is heart shaped. That's kind of cute. Oh that's the key. Can I take the diary? Take diary. It's not much use to you as long as it's locked. Well, I can't take it anyway. I can't unlock. Okay, look spirit board. Looking at the bottom corner, you see a ripped price tag with just enough visible to see it cost $3. That's so cheap. Guess to save a lot down the street had a sale on the occult. Great. Go east. Well, this looks not good. A giant blood smear covers the kitchen's tile floor, leading to the sliding door that goes to the backyard. You see a pair of glasses and a fallen rag near the blood. To the east is the garage. Behind you, to the south, is the downstairs hallway. The dining room is to the west. There's so much to discover. Look, glasses. They're Stephanie's. You get a sick feeling looking at them. Take glasses. You take Stephanie's glasses. Look rag. It has a hot pink stains all over it. Odd. Also, hmm. Take rag. You take the kitchen rag. Maybe I can add the rag to use scissors with rag. Ah, oh, okay. Um look sliding door. There's a number of strange things happening here. For one thing, you can't see through it. Beyond the glass doors might as well be the void by how dark it is. Around the door frame are hot pink smudges as if someone had been wiping the color all around the edge. One of the smudges almost looks like a symbol or letter, but nothing in a language you're familiar with. Oh, and there's some weird pulsing flesh slurred on the door handle itself. 
Ooh. Move. Sliding door. You can't do that. Push. Sliding door. This game. Okay. Use. Oh, yeah. When you reach toward the handle, either in bravery or stupidity, the flesh covering it seems to react to your presence. It stretches like putty and wraps itself around your hand, drawing you closer to it. You manage to yank your hand back after a couple solid tugs, and the flesh eases back into its spot on the handle. Use curling iron on sliding door. Do you mean to burn the flesh? Yes. This game does not... <laughs> Burn. <laughs> Thank you, game. After flipping the iron switch and waiting a moment, you press it to the flesh covering the door handle. A piercing shriek erupts from the flesh as discolored smoke rises and stings your eyes. The flesh is burning too fast for it to heal itself and soon it's black and charred, falling off the handle and onto the floor. The sound of its scream still rings in your ears. You should be able to open the door now. Thank you. Well, um, open... Sliding door should be able to and can are apparently two very different ideas. When you try to open the door without the flesh, it still refuses to budge. You must be missing something. Well, um, go, go south. Oh no, not go spith. Go south. Um, go. Oh, go west. I want to look into the... A small sink and toilet occupy the room. Various makeup is scattered on the vanity. The downstairs hallway is east. Look, makeup. Eyeliner, eyeshadow, and mascara galore. An open tube of bright yellow lipstick catches your attention. Look, lipstick. It reminds you of sunflowers. Take lipstick. Take everything. You take the lipstick, making sure to find its cap and put it on before putting it in your pocket. Go east. Go south. Um, go up. Use no. Um, look, Heather. Use broom. Extending the broom over the railing, you hook the chandelier stem with a bristle top and gently pull it toward you. The chandelier and Heather come closer and closer until the unbalanced weight of her body on an Unlevel chandelier causes her to slide off and fall to the entryway floor with a sickening crunch. Well, if Heather wasn't dead already, she's for sure now. Go down. Look, Heather. It's an even worse sight now, if you can't believe it. Take necklace. You pocket Heather's key, telling yourself that taking it from a corpse is for a good cause. Um, go, go north? No, was it the family room? Go west? Um, go north. One of the dining table chairs is blah, 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 spirit boards. Uh, there, there. Look, a diary. Use key. You insert the heart-shaped key and turn it until you hear a soft Click. Open diary. It's blank. <gasps> Someone must have been writing really hard on the previous page, though, since you can see the impressions of pen strokes on the sheet you're looking at. Use pencil. Using the pencil, you shade over the impressions on the page. The diary page details a series of symbols with a heading portal code at the top. You can't make heads or tails of what the marks individually spell or represent, but they're in a specific order, and that's enough for you. Take diary. You can read it just fine from here. Pfft. Oh, go east. Let's go to the garage. The garage is cold and empty of cars. Shelves of tools and equipment line the wall opposite of where you're standing. The kitchen is to the west. Look, shelves. You look through the equipment. Most of it is rusted or broken, making you wonder why Brandy's parents keep the junk to begin with. At the end of one of the shelves, however, you come across a pair of hedge shears in good condition. Take hedge shears you take garden shears use hedge shears do you mean to cut the flesh no it's already gone i can cut the flesh 
You set about cutting away at the flesh with the head shears. Despite the flesh oozing out a thick reddish black liquid with each cut, it folds over on itself like dough, swallowing any dent you make in the substance and healing almost immediately. Ew. From reading their tags, you discover the shirts are from a store so expensive you can't afford to look through its windows, much less buy from it. Okay. Go south. Look bad. It's made. Okay. Build charm. You cut off a lock of your own hair. Hope you know what you're doing. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Uh, no, you're not taking the spirit board. First of all, it's broken. Second, it's probably cursed. Hmm, what am I supposed to do here? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I will use my hair for the charm. And then I will die. But let it be known that I didn't want to do that. But I'm stuck a little and I don't want to, you know bore you to death with me not knowing what to do so use lock use lock on charm finish charm what do you add to the charm add lock you weave your hair in between the beads of your homemade charm after reciting the words you found in the blog post the charm feels warm in your hand and now Okay, bake portal. Oh my god. That didn't take me long. Using the diary in the dining room as a reference, you use the lipstick to write the portal code around the door frame. Once you finish the last letter, all of the marks glow once, then dull, as if in confirmation. I will die, by the way, because I used my hair as a charm. I know the right solution now, because I... I looked at the comments also for this solution. But it's done. It's done. I accept my fate. Well, this looks not good. Wait, what? Oh, wait. Open. Sliding door. When you put your hand on the handle, the symbols around the door begin to glow. You hear a low, distant rumbling before the door cracks open. You pull it all the way open before stepping back and staring into the darkness beyond. You pause and take a second to prepare yourself. Something tells you that once you enter the portal, it won't be so easy to get out. Well, let's go then! <laughs> oh, I don't even have to write something. Enter... Well, can we... Can we... Look! Portal! Maybe Nietzsche was right after all. It's the... If you stare into the darkness, the darkness stares back at you! Okay. Enter portal. Unlike the regular hard consistency of the kitchen tile, when you take a step into the darkness, your foot sinks a bit. The floor you're standing on feels slick and fleshy. It squelches underneath your feet as you walk. The juice is seeping into your socks. Wait, I don't have shoes? You really wish you had your shoes right now. Where are my shoes? Did I miss that? that I, did I take off my shoes? What happened? That's the mystery. You take it slow, step by step. Out of habit, you shine your flashlight around to see, despite being in darkness so thick it's palpable. After what feels like both a few seconds and an eternity, you feel yourself pass through something. You find yourself back in the kitchen. Well, not quite. It would be more appropriate to say it's a mirrored version of it. The tile in this version of the kitchen is the same as the path you just took slimy and all too eager to make sickening noises but is it drag queen sickening or is it sickening the ways to both the garage and the downstairs hallway are covered in the same material as the floor the portal is behind you open and as dark as ever the only way to go is east to what you assume is the dining room well then go east blam dining room what the flesh is thicker now. Unlike the Harrison's dining room, there's nothing here. Sure, there's the table, chairs and cabinet that were in the other dining room. But there's nothing on the table, nothing on the walls, nothing in the cabinet. Nothing. The kitchen and the portal are to the west. The family room is north. Go north. Let's go to our doom. 
family room? What is going on? Stepping into the room, you instantly gag from the smell. Again, is it drag queen gag or is it gog? <laughs> Rancid and sour. Okay, so it's the gog. Uh, like rotting food and cover your nose. The fireplace and end table are covered, leaving the couch in the shadow of whatever's on it as the only item of note. The dining room is south, the entryways to the west. Look, couch! Look, oh, look, couch. No, not coach. Coming closer, you recognize what the shadow on it is with a gasp. Stephanie! No, Stephanie, no! No, honey! Her eyes are milky and glazed, staring into nothing. Her mouth gapes open at an unnatural size and there's blood all over her cheeks and chin. The clothes and skin covering the top of her chest are splayed out on either side of her like a body during an autopsy. Through her exposed ribcage, you see that her lungs and her heart are missing, replaced by something shiny embedded in the back of her chest cavity's flesh. Look shiny! It's a key. You think you know what it goes to. After all, there's only one locked door in this house. Take key. You try to slide your hand through Stephanie's ribs, but it gets stuck halfway through. You won't be able to grab the key this way. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Use head shears. Well, this is probably the worst thing you've ever done. Taking the head shears, you position one of Stephanie's ribs between the blades. You take a deep breath, then crack. The first of the ribs is broken, falling out of Stephanie's body and onto the floor. The other ribs go next. Soon there's a small gap in Stephanie's ribcage that you can fit your hand through. However, the task also broke your shears, which you find disappointing, but not surprising considering it was with the junk in the garage. You take a deep breath before sliding your hand through the hole you made in Stephanie's ribs. You try to distract yourself from what you're doing by asking yourself how a key ended up inside Stephanie to begin with, but quickly disregard the thought when you pull it out. Wipe the clinging gore on the couch and put it in your pocket. Go west. Entryway? You instinctively look up toward the ceiling as you step into the entryway. No body on the chandelier. In fact, no chandelier at all. Up the stairs is the upstairs landing and the family room is to the east. Go up. Upstairs landing? The way to the rest of the bedrooms is blocked by flesh, making the top of the stairs tight and claustrophobic. The door at the top of the stairs appears relatively untouched, however. Down the stairs leads to the entryway. Use key. Can't do that. What? Open door. It's locked. Use key. You can't do... Unlock door, please? Oh my god. <laughs> <sighs> when you insert the key into the lock, the key liquefies in your hand, easing into the keyhole and sealing it up. Ew! The door then pops open a sliver, allowing you to enter the bedroom. Yes, let's do this. Let's end this. Master bedroom? The feeling of dread you get as you step into the master bedroom sticks to your skin. You know you shouldn't be here. The master bedroom, if you can even call it that, is little more than a spider's den. Webs of flesh string across the walls with large raised lumps dotting the f dotting the floor. Across the room, you see a large moon attached to one of the walls in a dark corner. Look, moon! <laughs> you walk closer to the moon, heart pounding. It's only when you're right next to it that you see what, or rather, who it is. Brandy! Her entire body, besides a section of her face, is covered in flesh. Oh no, Brandy! She's alive. Her eyes are closed, but you can hear her soft breathing. Talk, Brandy! Don't worry, Brandy. I'll get you out of here, you say. Take Brandy. <laughs> you can't take it. What? Look, Brandy. I see nothing special. I see a wonderful person. Mm. Pull Brandy. Move Brandy. You can't do that. Attach the, the flesh moon looks and feels like the same kind that was on the kitchen sliding door. Oh wait, use scissor. Is it, is it, you can't do that, okay. That was on the kitchen, oh! Burn moon. 
Using Stephanie's trusty curling iron, you start burning the flesh, cocooning Brandy's body. Once again, the shriek that sounds rattles your brain. Brandy coughs. You manage to thin out enough of the flesh to see Brandy's upper body. The wall around her stretches out and latches onto the curling iron, pulling it toward the wall. Seeing the flesh over Brandy starting to grow again, you let go of the iron, grabbing Brandy from her underarms and yanking her free. The two of you topple to the floor as the curling iron is swallowed by the wall. Rest in peace. You shake Brandy, calling her name. Soon her eyes flutter open, growing wide when they see you. Teresa? She says. No time to explain, you say. We have to get out of here. Brandy looks around. She must recognize the situation you're both in because she doesn't scream or cry or anything. Just swallows and nods. Run. No. Leave. You sling one of Brandy's arms over your shoulder, stabilize stabilizing her as the two of you walk to the door. As soon as you step through the door, however, something wraps around your waist. Yeah, I messed up the, the charm bracelet. Something else shoves Brandy ahead of you onto the upstairs landing. Then the flesh walls grow together, separating you from Brandy and sealing you inside the den. There's a hum in the air and the already tight walls start closing in. When you turn around, you see a lump of flesh protrude from one of the walls. As it comes closer to you, the lump stretches and morphs into something resembling a hand. But not a human hand. Its palm is too wide, its fingers too long. Stop, you say, holding out your protection charm in front of you. It does. Oh, a voice says from all around you. You're smart. I like you. I don't care about your opinion of me, you say. <laughs> well, that's that's a weird teenage drama moment. The walls pulls in what you assume is a love. It really is unfortunate you made this, though. Putting something of yourself into this as an offering to me. No, that's not what I'm... Oh, but it is. And I gladly accept. The flesh reaches out and wrenches the charm from your hand, absorbing the charm with your hair into itself. Then it wraps around your ankles. You struggle against it as it crawls up your legs. No, let go! You pull out your scissors, stabbing at the flesh. It heals almost as soon as it's struck. Struggling is pointless, girl, the voice says, your legs now firmly rooted to the ground. The next time you step the flesh, it holds your scissors and your wrists in place. You start to feel the flesh crawl into your skin. It feels like hair is cascading down your throat, itching and scratching as it grips you from the inside, grips your veins, your muscles, your sinew. You feel the need to choke and vomit at the same time, your body knowing there's something foreign inside of it. Your organs seize, your head throbs, everything inside of you screaming. Get out, get out, get out, get... Then it stops. And something is very, very wrong. You can't blink, you can't speak, you're staring straight ahead. Out of your periphery, you see one of your hands rise up to brush your bangs out of your eyes. Curious, seeing as your bangs weren't bothering you. In fact, nothing is bothering you. Go. You don't feel anything at all. Scream. This game does not require use of the word scream. What? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, your body refuses to listen. It's like you're completely immobilized while still seeing through your own eyes. You have to do something for the love of all that is holy. Do something. But you can't. And then you feel your body start to move without your control. It walks towards where the bedroom door used to be. The flesh recedes, revealing Brandy still on the other side of the wall. Teresa, she says, rushing forward and grabbing onto your arms. You okay? When a thing grabbed you, I... You see your hand rise up, still clutching the scissors and stab Brandy in the neck. No! Her eyes widen, one hand going to the wound while the other slides down your arm as she falls onto her knees and then the ground. Your body steps over her. Teresa... Hear her sputter as you walk farther away, out of the room, down the stairs. Your body continues walking and the flesh that was previously slathering the hallway shrinks away in response to your presence, as if welcoming your body through. Your body walks until it passes the portal, the Harrison's home and the front door, and it stands there until morning. After many hours a car pulls up, your dad rolls down the window calling out to you. Your body walks to the car. And in this moment, you recognize the start of your new life, the beginning of being a stranger in your own body. You get in the car and your dad starts driving down the road. 
After a few moments, your dad looks over at you. Are you feeling all right, Teresa? Never better. Ending possess! ta -ta! So, Olive Branch, gorgeous work. This really was amazing. I thought it would be shorter, but I don't regret it at all. This was so cool. My first text-based game. So, thank you for initiating me into the world of text-based games. Um, I think it was a great initiation. Um, I had some problems, but I don't think that's... A game issue that's just a thinking issue because English is not my mother tongue so I it's it's more difficult for me to think certain words like synonyms and, and stuff like that but look this is such a, a well-made well-paced amazing game also everyone else who's seen this um, this game is three endings. I obviously got the super bad ending. Uh, I assume there's also a good ending and maybe a, a, a decent ending. <laughs> An average, like, it's okay, but it could be better ending. Um, so if you want to play this and try things out and get the good ending, then I will put the post, uh, I will put the link of the game into the video description so you can play it all for yourself. Um, so yeah, again, this was part of the HQ Residential House Game Jam and I love that it really is a completely different game than what I would expect um, for this game jam. So that's a good thing. Olive Branch, that is an amazing thing. Thank you so much for this experience. I really enjoyed it a lot. So if you like this video, then you can like this video. <gasps> you can uh, comment or you can uh, subscribe to my channel. Just type in <laughs> like, comment, or subscribe. No, please. <laughs> you have to push buttons. I'm sorry. This is not a text-based adventure. This is real life. So, you know, there's more on the line here. Um, you're very welcome into my humble channel if you want to subscribe. Um, yeah, I had a great time with this. Uh, I hope you did too. Have a wonderful day and see you soon. Bye-bye-bye. This is my self-recorded outro song so I don't get hit with copyright claims. If you subscribe, you subscribe to a lot of fun tutorials, reviews and let's plays.